Hello and welcome to Flory Models, another vintage review for you. So today we've got Monogram's gorgeous 148 scale B24D Liberator. This is another one of those kits which has been just, no one's really done it. Obviously Monogram did it and that space it's very nice but it's very, very old. So again, it's funny how some of the kits have been redone and obviously HK now uh, did the B17 in 48, which we've done, which is a beautiful one. And we've seen it in 32nd scale, uh, obviously by Hobby Boss, but again, 48 scale, where are they? Anyway, you can see lovely box art just down on here. So as you can see, very, very nice indeed with the actual nice colorful markings there, Moby Dick. All right, so running around on the box, you've got, it's rattling, let's say, old box. Uh, you've got some of the build-up shots down in there as well. Some of the details talking about, obviously, the engine, so the propeller, the various bits and pieces as well for the turrets. Uh, and some more details down here. It sounds terrible when you move it. So kit number 5604. And again, Nice little build up shot of it just down in there. So, before we cause too much pain, let's have a look on the inside. Now, I haven't even looked in this one, so what we're going to be greeted by is a mystery to me as well as you. So, right there. And that'll stay. Same thing as the other uh, B29 we've reviewed. We've got the little inlay, which is quite nice to hold the box together. Uh, and again, it's been pointed out to me what can happen is over time, uh, the kit actually. Uh, the, the parts could become separated from the sprues because the sprues get brittle. After about 30, 40 years, what can actually happen is, is that the, the sprue, actually the plastic, contracts and becomes a little bit brittle. And that's why sometimes parts fall off the sprue, which has clearly happened here. And we have got a little bit of sprue rub, but hopefully that will polish out and be no problem at all. So anyway, we've got a fuselage there. We've got a molded in wheel well, straightforward on one of the wings. And then hopefully the rest of it is going to be okay. So we've got the clear parts, which actually look very nice. And they've been saved, so that's good. And then down in here, I think that's the, would have the fuselage halves on. We've got one of the sprues. We've got the other fuselage. You can see some nice internal details. This one looks like it's still on, just about. Again, we've got a sprue there. And then, again, we're sort of diving in. So we've got crew. Very nice crew. We've got the actual wings, tops and bottoms, and the tailplanes just down on there as well. We've got a black sprue with some of the parts on just like that. We've got our instructions. And then again, we've got a few bits here. So we've got, looks like seats. Oh, looks like we've got a bit of an accident with one of the props, uh, which would have to be a pin job. Uh, and put some of these back. And again, we said it's always worth to just keep every single bit you find in the bottom of the box, even if it just looks like it's a useless piece because you never know. So again, we've got some bits down in there, but we'll pop that out of the way for a minute. We'll work our way through. As always, we'll start with a, a quick look. To be honest, the decals don't look that bad, weirdly. Uh, but we'll have a look at the instructions first, which are proper yellowed and and gone through. So let's see what we've got in here. Ooh, it's like a treasure map. Okay, so we are, where are we starting? Where's one? There's one. All right, okay. So as you can see down on here, we've got starting off with the nose gear obviously being put in. I assume you need a hell of a lot of nose weight in this. Um, so yeah, to make this thing not be a tail sitter. So anyway, flight deck, all very nice as well. Talking about the pilot figure, so obviously the figures do fit internally. We've got the turrets as well. So uh, we've got one of the turrets just down in that one there. And then obviously we've got the, uh, I presume that's the side, was it the nose guns? I don't know, can't work this out at the moment. It's all a little bit weird. Uh, and then down in here, for those being fitted in, these are actually the side or oh, the waist guns, I think they call those being fitted in. And it's talking about the window position with the decal as well, just down in there. And then obviously lots of internal details as we can see going down here. So we've got the bomb racks and then other areas. So it looks like we've got some of the clear parts being fitted internally, but they're quite small. So I wonder if you get away with using the old PVA technique with that. Uh, and we're over this side. And again, it is a little bit of treasure map as you can see. So again, working your way around with those clear parts, nose wheel well system being fitted down into this one. And then just down in here, uh, that's talking about obviously cementing all of those into place and getting them in. It's not talking about nose weight. I think you need a lot of nose weight. Again, so turret being fitted. And again, this is the tail turret going down in there. We've got the front of the actual engines being fitted down into here, replacements. You've got tab system on here. So we don't get wing spars like we traditionally get. It'd be interesting if they overlap. 
uh, to hold them so it doesn't get the old droopy wing syndrome. And again, repeating on the other side, basically right the way through. Then you've actually got the main gear being fitted down into that one. The tail system, again, making sure you've got the sort of H alignment as I call that one down in there. Glasswork being fitted to the top. So it's a little bit uh, multi-parted down in there. We've got things like the pitot tubes being fitted onto this one. And again, nice little detail showing you the angles those should be at. Bomb base, obviously open and closed position, depending which way you're going to be doing that one. We've got the belly pal, because obviously this doesn't have the belly gun into it. We've got the top turret, obviously being fitted down and put in like that. We've got the little, uh, I think that's the skid uh, on there. It's got a ladder, so I'm wondering if the ladder works to stop it being a tail sitter. Uh, so that might work. And then obviously it's talking about the decals at this point being fitted down in as well. So modern instructions sort of talk about move this up a bit you can't see it uh talks about putting the decals on when you completed uh and they're down in here again guns being fitted in the front the turret being fitted down onto that one and technically that completes your build so that has your bomber done all down in here spot the yellowing uh down into this one so you've got your color call outs decals again right the way through talking about down in there and obviously you can see the nose one with the raid markings things like that down in there that's actually really nice indeed there's something has to be said about old instructions because you know we're so used to having booklets and you know books in some cases of going through with it step by step but again because these kits aren't as complex as modern ones are with multi parts and 10 parts to put together a ball or something you know these are two halves it's a lot more straightforward decals which i said i don't look too bad I, do you know what i'd probably give these a girl because they look if you catch them in the light you see all solid so if they would work or not i'm not too sure um, but again it looks like it as i say you've got the skull and crossbones down in here which you can't see because it's on a white background and i'm taking that as a bonus because that means they're still white uh, so yeah, you don't know that could actually work, but again, fear not if they're not there's plenty of options out there But we will keep those nice and safe just down in there, right? So Fuselage wise as you can see You've got full nice internals where it's required It's not absolutely everywhere and the external detail is obviously, uh, you know in the actual raised uh, panel lines, so if we start with this side and again you can see it's had a hard life, it's been knocked around, but that will all polish out and a coat of primer, I think you'd be fine. Again, like a lot of the bombers of this era, again, it's all raised details, but it's really sharp and crisp. So, you know, again, there's a lot of fours and against, and I know we're doing these reviews, a lot of people got in touch with me saying, you wouldn't see me building one of them for the tea in China. But honestly, I think if you're not into rescribing, you could get away with using them. And obviously we're doing a series of videos now to point this out and show you hopefully how you get back that detail. So it looks all very nice. But yeah, again, it's good, it's solid, it's crisp. You know, the panel lines do go all the way around it, which is, you know, a lot to be said with other manufacturers. Internal details, again, it's not everywhere, but it's where you need it. So obviously up there on the flight deck, you've got all the details there, the areas for the sort of, you know, between the mid upper gunner, the actual center area. So when you're looking up through the actual bomb bay, you'll be able to see it. And again, the waste areas where you can see it, it's there, nothing really in the turret. But again, the other thing I pointed out in some of the other builds, and this is another example of it, the ejector pins aren't massive and all over the place. They're pretty much on par. I think with a very simple sanding, it will be easy to deal with them. And again, this one's a little bit different. You have got some just down in some smaller areas like here and obviously down in here, but they're pretty much flush. But the wiring's all very nice. All of these internal details are molded very, very nicely. So yeah, I have to say, very nice indeed. And again, to give you a feel of how big this lump will be, you know, she is no slouch, but it's not over the top. So you are talking something about this sort of size. So she's a good old chunk. And I think, as I say, if I just grab a wing for comparison to give you a fit sort of size, it's not gonna be massively over the top. It's big enough without being stupid like on the 30 second scale ones. As we got it here, we might as well have a look at this wing as well. And again, really nice details. The fabric coverings, very nice, maybe slightly overdone. But again, all the surface detail, really nice and sharp. And yeah, this has got some sprue rub marks clearly all over it and everything but you can probably see you've got the nice raised riveting detail as well as obviously the raised panel line molded in wheel well so you don't have to worry about putting all of those together very nice it has got some sink marks as you can see which is you know we haven't seen too many of these on the old classic kits actually but there's a few on here and again that's purely out of this we've got these locatings and they marry up perfectly with those so yes 
Right, whilst we've got it here, we've got the the black sprue, which obviously got the bombs and the props. And again, we have got some damage on these on this particular kit. But you can see the bombs all looking very nice. This instrument panel is molded in reverse, but it has got all the details down in there, which is very nice indeed. All right. And again, the guns. But again, remember, don't forget, this is a 70s kit, you know, and again, the wheels. Don't have weight and wheels and things like that, but it's all just about here. The props, as I said before, we've got the damage, but uh, we don't have any sink marks on the props, but they do look very, very thin and very, very flat. So maybe, I don't know. We know there's aftermarket available, so you could go down that route a bit. Okay, so next up we've got this lovely sprue. And again, so we've got both halves of the wings here and some other bits and pieces. So if we start at the top here, I think this is the, some of the Bombay detail and things like that. Those tops of the engines. No problem at all. We've got the wheel wells on the outside there. The main gear, we've got one of the crew here. Uh, obviously sitting down, we've got another crew, looks like an engineer reaching up. Uh, we've got a couple of guys standing, more engineers. Again, this tailplane, let's do it this way. You can see, nice detail right the way through. Lovely mix of the actual raised detail coming through in that fabric. And again, other engine. So you've got the supercharger there. Another one right the way through. So again, it's funny because these don't have any sink marks. So it looks like there's no real right or wrong, but a very, very faint sink mark actually there. There's not one up here. So yeah, very nice indeed. Uh, I think this is the tail gunner's position with the actual ammunition racks for the crates. Again, very nicely done, all raised detail. The bulkheads, and then obviously inside the actual uh, gear doors, there's no ejector pins, ejector pins just here on the side. Oh, there is one, no, nope, tell a lie, I think there's one. I don't know, maybe it should be in there actually. I think it's detail that should be in there. So yeah, very nice indeed. Hmm, not as bad as we thought. Right, okay, so we've got the other top, and obviously this is where technically this one would be, uh, just down in here again. So again, more fabric -y bits, as you can see, just down on the back here. And again, more racks. We've got the Bombay doors, which because of the way they fit, if you've got them closed, you won't see them, but they are numbered. But there's, you don't have to worry about the inside, but the outside, as you can see, has got beautifully riveted details right the way over it. Nice indeed, nice little okay. Back in the box. Okay, last up down in here, we've actually got the uh, tails. We've got the flight deck area, that belly panel. We've got the engine fronts. Uh, so yeah, very nice. And again, really nice mix. Those engines. Again, they don't look anything like this, but I think by the time you've got some silver on them and a wash and some dry brushing, they look absolutely fine. Again, some of the other bits have come off. Those engines, the sides of the tails. We've got the flight deck top there. We've got one of the bulkhead and floors. I think that's the bombardier's position, things like that. And again, really nice on both sides. Lots of detail down under here as well. Lovely. Okay, last up, we got the clear parts. So as you can see with the clear parts, looking very nice indeed. And again, good sharp edges, so it's easy to mask up to. A mask set would be absolutely lovely though, wouldn't it? And obviously being the D, you've got the rounded front. We know the other version's got the sort of turret on the front. So you've got lots of things down in there for the actual guns being fitted in. Generally, even though it's got a bit of sprue rub on here, I think you could obviously dip it if you wanted to, but I think just literally a quick polish up should be absolutely fine with there. There you have it. Again, a, it's to say, you would call it a modern day classic. Let's face it, it's the only one. If you want to do a 24 scale, sorry, a 48 scale uh, B24, this is your only option at the moment. And again, I've heard lots of rumors about another 48 one coming out, but I've yet to have any evidence of that. I get a lot of people tell me this stuff coming and sometimes it does and other times you never see it. So I don't want to go on about who it's going to be, but, I'm really surprised that, you know, obviously Hobby Boss did the 32nd one and it stopped. I thought theirs was going to be a 48th. And then obviously we've heard about HK doing one as well. 
Uh, and then obviously those rumors have stopped as well. So again, I'm expecting somebody to drop one. In 72nd, obviously there's a few choices out there. Hasegawa is a beautiful kit, let's face it. But in 48 scale, this is still the only one you can get. So again, you are limited to what you've seen here. Again, aftermarket, it's a little bit hit and miss because it is an older kit now. Aftermarket companies don't jump on them as much. But if you get some of the old aftermarket, photo etchings like that, you can really liven this kit up. And again, like we said before, don't be put off too much by raised panel lines. You know, they can be dealt with but if you did want to rescribe it these items are quite flat so it's quite straightforward to rescribe them so you can either just sand them all off and start again or you can use them as a template and basically go alongside them and then remove the raised ones afterwards but it's not really a problem it's what great with these kits is they're not over complicated you've got a lot of molded in detail so if you're into your hand painting and things like that it's brilliant uh, without the need to actually be putting all of these parts in afterwards as you'd find on a modern kit but so for time saving they're great kits indeed. Anyway, that is Monogram's classic, or vintage, I should say, B24D in 148 scale.